This is your 420 Radio News for Thursday, October 10th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. Israeli opposition leader Shelley Yakimovich admits to smoking pot from the Los Angeles Times. Asking politicians whether they ever smoke pot can produce answers that range from silly to squirming, but when Israeli opposition leader Shelley Yakimovich was asked the question this week, she just said, yes. In an interview broadcast Wednesday on the Knesset channel, the 53-year-old lawmaker said she had smoked marijuana on a number of occasions as a younger woman, the last time about 16 years ago. She is the first senior Israeli politician to make such an admission. State Supreme Court hears challenge to rulings in drug testing scandal from PatriotLedger.com. The Massachusetts state highest court heard arguments Thursday on a challenge to a ruling that made it easier for those convicted of drug charges to have their cases thrown out because of the state drug lab scandal. Disgraced state chemist Annie Dukin had been charged with falsifying tests on drug samples taken to the Hinton Lab in Jamaica Plain. Thousands of cases have been affected by the scandal and many convictions have been reversed. The court could choose from a sliding scale, vacating all guilty pleas where Dukin was the primary chemist, vacating all pleas where she was involved in the drug testing, vacating all pleas that involved samples from the lab when she worked there, even up to vacating all pleas that involved the lab impugned by its ability inability to stop Dukin's behavior. Alternatively, the court could rule that conviction reversals are permissible only in cases where a defendant can prove Dukin fa falsified results. Denver Mayor wants to stop free joint handouts from CBS Local Denver. Denver Mayor Michael Hancock wants to update Sydney city ordinances to ban free joint handouts in city parks. Hancock tells Colorado Public Radio that he and City Councilman Chris Nevitt will introduce an ordinance on Monday that would better define the city's ban on public consumption of marijuana. The ordinance would emphasize that all Denver City Parks are drug-free zones. Public consumption already is outlawed under Colorado's law legalizing recreational marijuana. Seattle Police trade barbs with Stephen Colbert over pot and Doritos from MyNorthwest.com. The Seattle Police Department's newfound tongue-in-cheekiness is on full display again thanks to some shots across the bow from Stephen Colbert. Colbert took aim at the Seattle Police Department's highly publicized distribution of Doritos at last summer's Hempfest in a segment lambasting America's supposed surrender in the war on drugs. Seattle Police Department's Media Relations Department fired back a faux commentary of its own in an open letter to Colbert and his TV nation. We will read that letter to you in full in Hour 2's Toker Talk Radio. Are Marijuana Gardens Destroying History? From the Time Standard Online. The recent discovery of a marijuana growing operation that disturbed an archaeological site has some wondering if this might be more common than anyone wants to think. Growers want locations with southern exposure, warm weather, and nearby water sources. American Indians looked for the same things when locating villages and camps. The Humboldt County Sheriff's Office has identified 4,100 marijuana cultivation sites throughout the county this year alone, and those sites are sprinkled over an area with a very rich and populous American Indian history. Humboldt County Sheriff Office Lieutenant Steve Knight said it's an issue most deputies probably weren't even aware of. Officials were contacting local tribes and archaeologists to figure out the next steps and what they should be, as well as what laws are applicable to the situation. Legal marijuana trend spreads as more states weigh votes from Bloomberg.com. Voter support for legal marijuana in Washington and Colorado is spurring similar campaigns in California and three other states that together may bring pot within lawful reach of almost one in five Americans. Advocates are seeking the signatures of registered voters in California, Arizona, Oregon, and Alaska with a combined population of 49 million to put the question on ballots in 2014. Colorado and Washington last year legalized marijuana for 12.1 million people. This has been your 420 Radio News for Thursday, October 10th, 2013. 
I'm Russ Melville. When we come back, we go behind the headlines and look at Aerosmith's latest visit to Uruguay and their praise for President Jose Mujica's plan to legalize marijuana. You're listening to The Russ Belville Show on 420radio.org. We'll be right back. 